What's the biggest, crap, I'm the douchebag here, moment you've ever had? At college, there was a guy who always walked around leaned ware back, always had headphones on, swaggered, I asked my friends one day if he really thought he was that cool, he had polio. My moment was not even something I did but just sitting next to my friend who was the actual douche. Me and some friends decided we would take another one of our friends out to a movie because she had not done much since her mother had passed away about a month earlier. The movie was Shaun of the Dead. At one point when the zombies were everywhere my friend inadvertently and without thinking said wow that zombie looks like your mom. The girl immediately burst into tears and my friend soon realized what he had done. The night did not go as planned. Ouch, though it's probably for the better that she left the movie early considering, Sean has to shoot his zombie mom in the head at the end. Spoiler. In 7th grade gym class we were playing volleyball. Teams were co-ed and randomly assigned by the gym teacher. I hated losing, and still do to this day, but I was taking the game way too seriously. There was this one girl who had her jacket sleeves over her hands and she was missing every shot. I told her to roll up her sleeves and use both hands to play. She seemed pretty offended but I didn't think too much of it. Fast forward to the end of class. I was in the locker room talking to my friends about this girl who sucked. My friend overhears me talking. Stops me and says you know she only has one hand. Right I look at him dumbfounded. Refusing to believe that I was unaware that a girl who had been in my grade for 7 years had one hand. Everybody else in the locker room knew and eventually convinced me. I have never felt like more of a douchebag than I did on that day. TL. DR. I yelled at a one-handed girl for being bad at volleyball in gym class. I'm a tame driver by California standards. When I moved to the Pacific Northwest, crap, I'm the douchebag here. As a Pacific Northwest driver, this is how I feel when I drive to Canada. I have this kid in my class, let's call her Caroline that is miraculously absent from school whenever we have a test. Her cousin is in another one of my classes and had told me that all Caroline has to do is tell her mom that she doesn't want to go to school, and the mom will let Caroline stay home for no reason whatsoever. For the last test, Caroline told me that she would not be there for the test, and I launched into a long diatribe about how I see the pattern in absences, about how she's disrespecting me by skipping school on test days, and about how it's negatively affecting her grades. She then told me her grandmother had died and gave me a note from her mother, excusing her from the test. I called up her mother to potentially confront her about letting her daughter stay home when she is not sick and because the note looked really fake. Sloppy handwriting. Seemingly obvious forgery. Her mom is on the phone for less than a minute before she starts crying hysterically because her mom, Caroline's grandmother, had actually died. I stayed on the phone with her for 30 minutes. Comforting her and offering my condolences. TL. DR. Student always skips school on test days. Skips test because her grandmother died. I confront the mother to find out grandmother is actually dead and cause the mother to have a complete mental breakdown. Kind of a boy who cried wolf scenario here. I'm a medical student. I once had to interview a patient. Was taking a family history to get a history of genetic illnesses. He stated that his mother died of a stroke and his father had died recently, but he didn't remember what he died of. What I meant to say was it's okay that you don't remember. I'm sorry for your loss. What came out of my mouth was it's not a big deal. My attending pretty much threw me out of the room. That's not so bad. If I were the patient, I would have understood it's not a big deal to mean it's okay that you don't remember. D my 21st birthday, about 10 shots in. We're crossing the quad at our school at night to go to the bar down the street and there's a candlelight vigil. I had no idea what it was at the time and drunkenly scream out nice is this for my birthday. I'm the douchebag here. This made me laugh way more than it should have. <laughs> Loudly complained to my girlfriend at the time about the rude bee that pushed in front of us in a queue. Dang some people are so self-centered. Didn't she freaking see us? No in fact she didn't. She was blind. There's a blind girl and an almost blind guy that are friends and frequent the dining hall by my dorm. One day, I was standing in line behind them and out of the blue the girl just rears back and smacks the guy in the cheek and says H.A. You didn't even see it coming. I had a 3000 word essay to write up for school. It was last minute and I had spent a good few hours working on it. I went for a toilet break. 
came back and found this new kid, a chubby Asian fella, sat at the computer I was sat at, playing computer games. I ran up, pushed him off and found he had crossed off my work which I hadn't saved, and yes, it's my own stupid freaking fault for not saving. I flipped, started screaming at this guy, pushing him and telling him he was a freaking moron and threatening to beat the crap out of him. He looked very scared and confused. Later that day I was pulled into the head teacher's office and asked why I flipped out. I explained the situation, feeling that I was justified. Turns out he was heavily autistic. Frick. Just screamed pushed around a handicapped kid. What a freaking butthole. He had the best name ever too. Chinese students often pick their own English names when studying abroad. He chose Sunny Nice. I was at a bar and the TV was airing the news. We couldn't hear anything, but an image of a kid with a wrestler, Luchida, mask and another kid with bandages on his head and body appeared on screen. And I yelled something like whoa watch out for Mascarita Sagrada and the mummy. Then a wild text appeared on the bottom of the screen that read, Burns kids would talk about being burnt on 95% of their body and losing their parents to a fire or something like that. I felt like a douchebag and everyone else agreed. A lot like your little faux pas. I walked into the lunchroom in high school and saw on our little lunchroom news television kids playing hockey while pushing themselves on old school sleds of some sort. Me. Look at those retards trying to play hockey sitting down. Everyone stared at me like I just shot H into the soft spot of a premature baby's head. It was the special olympics. A co-worker telling me that another co-worker just left because she received news that her brother committed suicide. I said and how long is she going to be out in a snotty tone? Seriously, the brother committed suicide didn't register in my brain yet and I asked that question like it was such a huge inconvenience because we all now had to take on some of her shifts. Yeah, I got some shocking stares from everyone. Then I realized what I said. I ride public transit to school every day. And my backpack is always stuffed with books. My personal bubble doesn't include my backpack though. And for a full year I was unaware that when the bus was really crowded, I would be mercilessly swinging it into other people's personal space. One day, a really old man informed me that I was inconveniencing a young lady behind me. I told him the bus was crowded for everybody, and asked him what he would have me do. He said, verbatim. Put it on the ground. You freaking idiot. This guy must have been 90 years old. That's when I knew I was the bad guy. In my early 20s, I got engaged to my high school sweetheart of 7 years. At one point she developed skin cancer on her arm, which she managed to hide from me for a couple of years until she finally went to a doctor and was diagnosed. Then one day out of the blue, she breaks off the engagement and tells me I need to move on. Well. I more than moved on. I started banging everything that moved and even ended up in a threesome. A couple of months later she calls and says we need to talk. And I'm pretty sure she's getting ready to beg me to come back to her. So I go to her house and she's in a wig and her face is clearly bloated from chemo treatment. Before she can say much more than, it's no big deal, I'll be fine. I put on the macho act and tell her how great life has been. Even to the point of telling her about my threesome. She begs me to stay the night but I brush her off hoping to make her regret leaving me. I didn't see her again until a month later when her mom called and told me she was in palliative care. I rushed to the hospital, but she was already in a coma and died the next morning in my arms. I watched her take her last breath, knowing she left this world thinking I was the biggest douche on the planet. Her sister told me later that she was planning to tell me that night she called me over, that the cancer had spread to her brain and she was dying. 16 years later and I still can't forgive myself. Jesus Christ, dude. We had some items go missing around the house, so it was decided that we should change the locks. There had been a few break-ins in the neighborhood. When the hour cleaning lady came the next week her key obviously didn't work and I had to go get the door for her. It was about 8am and I had just woken up. She says, I thought you all changed the locks on me ha ha ha. I reply with a deadpan, we did, and walked away. Took me about 5 minutes to realize how douche why that sounded and felt like a total tool. In high school, can't remember the context, me being sarcastic. What, does your dad have leukemia or something? Her dad had leukemia. That is such an oddly specific thing to be sarcastic about. You fricked up, man. 
It was winter, that is, snow all over the roads, and I was driving behind some guy in a big SUV. As we come up to a red light, he moves into the right turn lane, and I continue in the straight ahead lane. When the light turns green, he doesn't turn, and instead keeps going straight ahead and I almost run into him as he drifts into my lane. So of course, I honk and give him the finger. A day or two later, the snow on the roads melted, and I noticed that the turning lane he was in was not actually a turning lane. It was another go straight ahead lane, and I had actually drifted into his lane, thinking it was my lane, honked at him, and gave him the finger. Yeah, I felt like a pretty big butt after that one. TLDR. I drifted into another lane and honked flipped off an innocent guy due to my own stupidity. After about season 3 of house I would randomly say it's never lupus in conversation. Until a friend chimed in with my mom has lupus. Thought of defending my situation and decided to just apologize instead. My cousin's GF told me she was adopted and I thought I'd call her bluff. I took her cell phone and called her mom. Who informed me she was actually her adoptive mom. My cousin later told me her biological mom was murdered by her BF when she was a baby. I bought her an iPad. Act like a douche to someone. Always iPad. I moved my newspaper and discovered my tin of biscuits and opened. It was the other man's tin of biscuits the whole time. The best part of that story is, some guy has been wandering around England for the past 15 years with the same story. Only he doesn't have the punchline. I was going to the movies with my, now ex, girlfriend in college. I think it was one of the Harry Potter movies. The kid at the ticket booth was a very tall, slim, acne afflicted, ginger nerd. Now I'm a nerd myself, so I harbor no ill will towards him for his appearance. But this was my impression of him. My girlfriend was looking through her purse as I asked the kid for two tickets. To which he replied up, that'll be $18 in a very nasally nerd voice. Unfortunately for him, I have this awful habit of imitating any weird or funny noise as soon as I hear it, but usually only in my head. For some reason the filter just wasn't there and I immediately imitated him right in front of his face saying that'll be $18 in an exaggerated nerdy, nasal tone. There was a good 5-10 seconds of silence as we both stared into each other's eyes. I will never forget the look on his face. I crushed him and we both knew it. I grabbed the tickets from his hand, thanked him, grabbed my girlfriend's arm and got the frick out of there. I was completely ashamed of myself. My girlfriend never noticed. Comma my, now ex, girlfriend, oh, she noticed. Driving my car through a parking lot after work, and a group of young skateboarders are headed at me. Three got to the left. Two go to the right one of them falls and his board shoots under my car. I ran that crap over and snapped it in half. I looked back. He threw up his arms. Then I just kept driving. As a skateboarder, that is hilarious. Not your fault. Went to a guy's house to jam with a band. Hadn't met him before. And his daughter kept coming to ask me if I wanted to play with the babies in this really annoying, unique way. After about the 20th time I began to grow tired of it and I told her I didn't want to play in a tone kind of mocking how she had been asking me. He then said with a complete stone cold killer serious face. She has some mental disability that I can't remember. I think you should probably make her happy and play with the babies. So I played with the babies and avoided eye contact with him for a while. He really should have told you about that. Oh, I got this one. Probably too late to get views. I coach a college team and one of my players, call him Steve, invited me to a reception at his house last Sunday because his mother passed away. This kid is 18, a freshman, and has to deal with the death of his mother in the first year of college. I feel terrible and want to help in any way so of course I'm going to this reception for support. His mother fought lung cancer for the last few months and died last week. We're at his house and there's about 50 people all standing around talking and I'm standing in a circle of 4 other players on the same team. Steve comes over we can tell he's had a rough day of thanking people for coming. He's surprisingly optimistic. And I can tell he's trying not to get too down. We're trying to stay positive. Telling jokes and interesting stories, talking about how big his house is, and how he has this awesome fireplace. Then one of the players coughs this terrible cough. He's been sick for a few days and coughs up all this gross phlegm. 
Sick kid says, I hate that I have this stupid cough that won't go away. To which I respond, that sounds more like cancer. I freaking made a cancer joke in front of an 18 years kid whose mom just died of lung cancer. I felt terrible. I was playing football at a bar, been winning and drinking all night. I'm playing forward. A new team comes in, the game starts and I get the ball to attack. Stopping the ball ready for a skill shot. I look up, to see the other guy holding only the goalkeeper bar. This conversation followed. Come on, grab both bars. You're making this too easy. I'm good man. Carry on. Seriously, have you seen me play before? I've been scoring all night. Grab both bars or I'll score anyways. I would if I could. Just play. What do you mean? Oh. He had no right arm. I was riding my bike towards downtown, in a bike lane, when this big fat dude just steps right out in front of me, making me swerve at the last minute. I hate it when people do this. If you look both ways before you cross the street you should friggin look both ways before you cross the bike path. So, since he almost caused a crash, I turn back, and shout, watch where you're frick. Suddenly realize that said big fat dude is in fact a little old lady all bundled up in a huge coat, right in front of an assisted living home, crossing the bike path to get to the handicapped van with the open door waiting for her. I'm, go, I'm, there's no coming back from that, so I just kept on riding and felt like the crappy douchebag I was. I know it's douche way but it would serve their own best interest to look before crossing. An older person crashing into a bike would never work out well for the older person. I was late for school one day, and it was really snowy and cold out and I was in a hurry. It was an important lecture that I really didn't want to be late for. On my way to school I passed a girl in a wheelchair stuck in a pile of slush and couldn't get out. She was just sitting there struggling in the cold. But I ignored her please because I didn't want to be late for class. I regret that decision. I've typed it here before, but I think it deserves me reposting it. I was at a restaurant with my mom and brother. I was sitting just opposite of them in a booth, right between two other families, and had just placed our order. I started hearing something, electronic, coming from behind me. Do you remember those 80s toys, speak and spells? It sounded like that. It just kept going on and on with that electric voice. Here I am, trying to eat with my family and some dang kid behind me just won't let up. I started to loudly exclaim how annoying it was to listen to that while eating. How maybe, kid shouldn't be playing at the table, especially in a packed restaurant. It worked. Family behind me got up and moved to a different table. As they were passing our table I see an older gentleman with some type of neck wrap hold something up to his neck. In an electronic raspy voice he said to his family about going to that table up there. It was his electrolarynx. Probably fresh from the hospital. I felt like the biggest douchebag ever. I couldn't eat my food because I felt so bad. 19 years old working at Best Buy. Christmas week. Hanging out at the front LP security. Desk next to one of the security guys. My eye catches a lady waddling towards the door us. Easily 400 plus LBS. And dragging an oxygen tank. I say, if I ever get so fat I need oxygen. I hope somebody shoots me in my sleep. I go silent as she gets within earshot. Co-worker next to me says, hi mom. I was 20, at a party. I saw this girl that I remembered have a good time chatting with at a previous party about 9 moss. Earlier, I was trying to be smooth and all, and I mentioned I remembered her car, an early 70s Corvette Stingray. She said she didn't have it anymore. I asked what happened. She just said she had an accident. Without realizing how reluctant she had become at answering these questions, I pressed her for details. Turns out she had struck an 8YO boy and killed him. It was in no way her fault, but she was understandably shaken very deeply by the whole experience. Bro, I felt bad. I was trying to be cheerful and engaging with this pretty girl at a party, and in about 5 minutes, I had managed to set a new standard of regret to challenge myself with at all the social events I attend for the rest of my life. I got this one. So during the summer I was trying to rent a storage unit somewhere in southeast Tennessee. At the time I needed a climate control unit to keep my stuff safe from the summer heat. I drive to one storage place. No vacancies. Another. Same story. 
Finally, I find one with like 2 open units. I meet with the owner who happens to be filling for the manager who's not there. As I'm signing the paperwork I'm making smaller talk about how I can't find any good storage unit places. The owner tells me that after those 300 or so tornadoes hit TN everyone was putting their crap in storage. I make a quick jab about how society's bad fortune is his good fortune when he tells me that the manager who was supposed to be working was killed in the tornadoes. Bro, so you don't even have to pay him. I've got a couple, but after reading this thread, I don't know if they're worthy to be on here. I went to Orlando with a few friends after undergrad for summer vacation. We're all Canadian, so we exchanged our cash for some USD before boarding the plane. I had primarily 20s and 50s for some reason, but I figured that I'd end up breaking them pretty easily after going to restaurants, checking out Universal Studios, and buying tourist crap. On the first day we were there, we decided to walk to a restaurant down the street from our hotel. At that point, I hadn't had a chance to break any of my large bills. Right at the entrance of the restaurant was a homeless guy who approached me and asked, Can you spare any change without thinking? I said, Sorry, I only have large bills. And he replied, Must be nice. It was so awkward and I felt like such an butthole for it. My boss was diagnosed with cancer back in July. He went through chemo and worked from home, so it seemed like things were going to be okay. Back in October, he emailed me to let me know that he was in the hospital under palliative care and would like visitors. I went there as soon as I heard, but not before stopping picking up a few things. I picked up some flowers, some ginger snap cookies from Ikea. It's his favorite store, but we don't have any in the city we're working in now. A box of chocolates, and a magnet that says, when the going gets tough, the tough eat chocolate. When I got to his room, I saw he was hooked up to a bunch of machines and had tubes coming out of him from every direction. I handed him my gift bag of goodies and he said, thanks, but my stomach doesn't work, so I can't eat anything anymore. He had pancreatic cancer that had spread throughout his GI system, so he had a catheter. I should have asked the nurse beforehand. TL. DR. I told a homeless man I had too much money, so I wouldn't give him any. My boss was dying and couldn't eat solids and I brought him food. Woke up to go to class. Checked my email real quick and it just said you to the recent news all classes today have been cancelled. Rather than actually take the 2 seconds to find out what the news was first thing I did was call my friend and said dude classes are all cancelled let's get fricked up on a Tuesday for no reason. Date. The 11th of September 2001. My girlfriend woke me up and told me that someone flew a plane into the WTC. In my sleepy haze, I pictured a two-seater plane and a clueless pilot flying into the building. I laughed and said what a dumb ass. During my senior year in high school, one of my female friends got pregnant. In her later months, after a theater performance, everyone was gathered around in awe of her pregnant appearance. When I approached, the baby kicked. Everyone was making the typical O. Oh, He's gonna be a soccer football player comment so I decided to pipe in with a suddenly the baby is not white. Father is gonna be pee kind of joke. Oh, maybe the baby will be a basketball player. Suddenly everyone's looking at me attentively as to why I think the baby is going to be a basketball player. Suddenly poker face. At that very moment, I remembered that two of the potential fathers were black. And I was looking like a real C. I quickly came up with that lame response. Because he'll dribble. Ha, huh. dribble, basketball, drooling, funny. I looked like a real shat, and everyone thought that I was insinuating how she slept around, and to be later confronted by her peers on how much of a lame, witless d-bag I was. <laughs> Me a guy would hate to have kids it'd be okay if no other kid was ever born ever again. Woman I work with I just had a miscarriage last night. Me bad poker face. Thanks for doing your part. <laughs> it didn't happen to me. But I watched it take place. It was my senior year in high school and I was the debate team captain. We were giving examples of what debates would be like at a tournament, in class. So one of our newbie debaters was debating abortion with a second or third year debating. But anyway, the newbie was against abortion and the more seasoned debater was for it. So the newbie gives his spiel about how wrong it is blah blah blah. And this debater goes up and makes the argument what if a woman is raped, 
she will have to bear this child, and every time she sees them, it will be a constant reminder of a time they were abused. Why should a woman have to go through that torment something like that? And the next words out of that kid's mouth were well, I am a rape baby, my mother was raped and she kept me, if abortion was allowed, I wouldn't be here. You could see the look on his face crap, I'm the douchebag here, and everyone was so uncomfortable that we restrained laughter to avoid laughing at this kid. Or, he is the best debater in the world. When I was in my final year at school we had to watch some documentary about underage pregnancy. I commented to my mate that it would suck having a kid at such a young age. Just as the words escaped my mouth I remembered his son was only just born a few months earlier. Douche. Met a co-worker's husband for the first time. He is obviously some kind of sick. I shake his hand and he says don't worry it's not contagious or some sort of joke. I respond jokingly with it's okay I've got plenty of sick time, at work, he looks at me, directly into my soul, and says I don't think you want this sickness I thought the man had a freaking cold, turns out he has a terminal illness. If he made a joke first then got mad at you making a joke then here's the douchebag. Bought about 6 pounds worth of sweets for the week ahead, gave a 20 pound note, argued for about a minute that my change was wrong, until I realized that indeed, 14 pounds was the correct change, and not the 16 pound that I thought it was. Stupid brain not no numbers. We've all been there. In high school, but hat of a kid used to pick on me all the time. Kid said and did some pretty screwed up stuff. Tripped me going down the stairs. Hit me in the head with a basketball from across the gym. Admittedly a great shot. At one point he was talking crap and I turned around in the middle of class and said, Your mother is a W. Here we go. He responds to let me know that his mom is dead. At this point he's already used this line for general sympathy only to high five his buddies when everyone else walked away. I, thinking I'm hot crap, call his bluff. He then tears up. Puts his hands over his face and tries to not let the teacher notice that he's on the verge of breaking down. In my mind, suddenly, all I can think is, this is how I die. After class he follows me down the hallway until we're out of earshot of the teacher and punches me in the face. Instinctively, I apologize. I asked when his mom died and how and then told him about how my mom died. We skipped the next class and had a really awesome conversation about family, losing loved ones, etc and it ended with him apologizing for punching me in the face and asking about my how my mom died. I told him I didn't really like talking about it. He gave me the most understanding look and said, it'll be okay man. It was an incredible moment. We talked a few more times mostly as moral support for each other. My mom isn't dead. I'm such an butthole. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.